Hey everybody, how you doing? This is Tim Clicks. I'm on the planet to build a better planet. And you know what would be cool in a day that uh, we might not be feeling so good, there's some bad news, would be to create some sweet procedural art. And I know what you're thinking, you're like, what? <laughs> like, this isn't particularly interesting. I'm not an artist. And uh, I want to show you that you don't need to be. We can get the computer to be the artist uh, with uh, what starts with extremely simple mathematical functions. And uh, and there are some, yeah. Uh, yeah, we, we, so that's what we're going to build. In fact, so this thread which came originally from Martin Klepper from, uh, I suppose, Twitter. And I can post this in the comments. Uh, that's where the original inspiration came from, uh, which generated this meta filter post. Um, so here's the meta filter post. And then after that, uh, a uh, person named, I'm just checking the name, uh, Chris Reuter uh, decided to build a bot. <laughs> and that is kind of what we're trying to emulate today. <laughs> so um, if you haven't used uh, streaming before, please say hi uh, in the comments. If you are viewing me on Twitter, it's really nice to, to wave um, and say hello. I'm always really happy. Uh, if you are not, like if you're watching this on the recording, pl please do subscribe to the channel, in particular the YouTube channel. That's uh, YouTube uh, slash Tim Clicks to be able to be seen, sorry, to be notified of future live streams and tutorials. Okay, so we have a quite a lot of work to do before. Um, so I need, because we need to sort of teach, we need to sort of describe how these things are uh, made. And then you can see here that the, uh, we're going to be building these kind of weird, quirky expressions, and we don't really know what we're going to get. Um, and I hope so. Yeah, yeah. So this is going to be a bit of an exploratory process. And uh, I hope you don't mind uh, that uh, it won't necessarily be linear. I um, will just I'm just doing something behind the scenes because I've got my cheat sheet already uh, in my tutorial code. So I am going to do something renaming. And here we are. So I'll just do one little, one more thing. Add new. Okay, I almost ready. I should also do one more thing, which is to send some notifications out. So uh, just bear with me for just a second, and I will just make sure that my Discord server is not notified that I am live. I can see the numbers kind of ticking up, which is really amazing. And um, please kind of go share with us, with your friends or whatever, if you're that kind of person. Uh, <laughs> I like hanging out with you too. Um, and just sending the... Curious as to whether or uh, where everyone is from. Are you from Asia? Are you from Europe? Are you waking up? Uh, probably highly unlikely that you're going to be uh, available. Uh, sorry, highly unlikely that you're going to be watching this from the Americas. And um, that is okay. So uh, I'm just uh, sending a message to everyone. Oh, sorry, actually, that's not quite right. Yeah. Cool. Okay, sending that and let's go to the code. In fact, at the moment I've got an empty or near to empty cargo new, and I'm going to call this bit grid. Uh, it's saying that I've got a couple of different things in here uh, because I've actually already tinkered with this a little bit and 
let me oh actually remove uh in the wrong directory okay cargo new don't create a package that is the same name as the one that you've already got <laughs> the underscore uh is essentially my cheat code for myself um and I'm going to start by adding this folder to the workspace, otherwise Rust doesn't, or the Rust analyzer doesn't know um, where to find it. And let me just find tutorials, and then I'm in 2024. Oh, there's been quite a few proc, bit field proc gen in there. Bitgrid. Add that to the workspace. And this should magically, oh, that didn't quite work. Uh, I wonder why not. This is very embarrassing. <laughs> People watching this are like, you know, I didn't want to spend 10 minutes just waiting for you to set up. I actually thought that there'd be some code behind this. And there is, I promise it's coming. In fact, uh, add, oh my goodness. It doesn't make any sense. What I'm going to do now is just create a new instance of the editor in the right directory that you can actually see. You can see here that there is nothing in here essentially. We've got hello world. What I want to do is take one of these really cool functions and, uh, sorry, uh, let's look at the original and you see that all we need is a very, very simple expression and to create some pretty stunning looking images and that is a good place to start uh well let's see if we can recreate this one so this is uh a grid of 256 to 256 so uh 4x in uh, actually let's start with the y column go for column wives first 0 to 256 uh, so this will actually be 0 to 255 and uh, for y uh, for x in uh, 0 to 256 again uh, we want to sort of plot out a some sort of result for every we, we're mapping from x and y into some value and then I want to accumulate that into some sort of array. And so we'll start off with, um, uh, let's say I've got, uh, let's call this a grid. And I need to make it mutable. And then it will be initialized as a vector of vectors that, um, let's just check uh, vector of vector. By the way, if you um, are watching on YouTube, you are very welcome to uh, add comments. Um, also on Twitch, I think um, I'm streaming live to there as well. I think so. I've got X and Y, and now grid X Y is result. At the moment, we don't have any way to display uh, this expression that we've got which is x or in the bitwise or and then modulus uh, 9 and why is that one unhappy it's saying that the loop variable is used to index grid so over through here uh, it's actually saying that in rust what you should probably do is use a uh, an iterator over grid and I'm going to essentially ignore that because this code here is easier for people that don't know Rust. This is arguably un, this, you know, bad style, uh, but you can always refactor this later to do something that is more, that feels more Rust-like to you. Uh, It's nice to see people waving in the comments. <laughs> okay, now 
to start with, all we can really do is sort of hope that... In fact, I'm just going to go to 16, just to get a flow, maybe 64. Just to get a bit of a flavor of like what this thing is actually doing. Um, the reason why I'm using 64 is it's fairly likely that I can actually... Um, see it you can see here that it looks a bit awful um but i've got some repeating patterns we've got three four five doo -doo 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 -doo. and so what i now need to do is create an image to do that so we've got a grid of pixels essentially and they all have different color values there's a different there's a, sort of a next step which is deciding whether or not to have like how to convert these pixel values uh, which uh, into something that looks so we, sh we we kind of want something that looks like this really interesting pattern and uh, and in JavaScript it's almost trivial <laughs> Oh, okay. So there's a, qu a question here. Uh, it's fascinating that you say that this is not Rust-like. What would Rust, what would sort of idiomatic Rust look like? Um, and so, so what? So the the linter for uh, the linter for Rust is called Clippy, and it recommends that we create an iterator over the grid and uh in fact there's a couple of different ways in fact we don't actually really need grid as a we don't need to mutate it in fact we could create an iterator over the ranges so 64 a range is an iterator and we could sort of combine that with uh an, a another one which is zero to uh, 64 and uh so we're going actually this should probably be 65 no uh oh well and and then i can map that so this uh so i have now an x and a y position and what i want to do is for every x and every y return some value And I'm going to do that by applying uh, a function that I've just defined in line, like uh, otherwise known as an, a lambda function or an anonymous function. And from there, I can collect the all of these values and uh, into a vector. Uh, let's call this flat grid. So I just have all of the integers, uh, and this should be of length. Uh, as long as I'm doing my my, someone's going to correct me here if I'm if I'm if I'm wrong. But this should be a uh, you know a big long list of all of them, and then I need to uh, uh, so I'm just um, I just received a complaint that the stream is a bit laggy, which is unfortunate because. I have a fiber internet connection <laughs> that's plugged into the wired internet. So uh, I'm sorry about that. Um, and by, yeah, so the, the, the following comment is to say that laggy there means like a low frame rate. Um, so apologies if the quality isn't as good as it should be. Uh, let's uh, just finish this. Uh, so my suggestion would be to let me just uh, i could go and tinker with a couple of the settings um but i'm uh, i'm going to avoid playing around with the technology too much and uh 
the way around this would I'm going to I'm recording all of this content live locally and I will re-upload a high quality video onto YouTube and so if you have subscribed to the channel it's very easy to get access to the, the high quality stream um, it will just obviously be about a day late <laughs> ah and yeah okay so there is a i knew that someone would would um uh so zip doesn't actually do the cross product and i am so this is actually doing something slightly different um it's not actually going uh it's only going to create something that's of length 64 and off the top of my head i can't quite remember uh yeah and then the, the 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 comment here is you might actually need a map in a map or a flat map which is absolutely which is very similar to what we're doing so the principle here of like what is the idiomatic thing that a rust programmer would do a rust programmer would use iterators much more heavily I'm going to stick with an imperative style just because it's slightly more accessible to people that aren't from Rust and it's slightly more familiar. Uh, it's also uh, it's also easier for me right now. I'm trying to minimize the amount of thinking that I'm doing because I'm watching comments. I'm uh, coding <laughs> and, um, uh, and it's just a little bit simpler. So right now we are just going for six, uh, sort of a 64-bit matrix, uh, so 64 by 64, and we are generating uh, values of pixels at X and Y. And there is a decision we've got to make about what it means uh, for an image to exist and what we could potentially, so we have a kind of, we need to create, at the moment we've just got integers uh and we need to decide what we mean by an integer uh, because what we really like is a picture um now to do that we can um think of a few ways i'm just going to use the image crate oh that's the wrong button actually no it's not cargo add image will create um will go and up <laughs> update my program with the image crate and let's see if it can and I'll just uh, oh if I go and look at my manifest I can see that the image crate has been brought in at the moment I'm at 025 and um, thanks cargo add now I can uh, use image for example and so just so that people are not familiar with uh, with rust um, i know what i'm talking about the image crate it comes from a crate uh, sort of an, a package repository called crates.io and uh, it's a heavily used one that i um i like a lot uh, it has a very simple api uh but also has a, a huge amount of uh sorry it has a very simple initial api with a lot of features and the thing that we need to care about is uh we're going to essentially create an image buffer which is this um space of an uncompressed image and that we're going to convert into a um and look there's a very convenient <laughs> Here is a very, very convenient function. Uh, oh, sorry, a little a little example code that uh, will enable us to have an uncompressed image and then export it essentially as a, um, what are we exporting it as? We're exporting it as, say, a PNG or um, a bitmap file. Okay, so in my code, I will uh, use image. So the RGB image is a type and RGB, oh, they're both types actually. Um, and RGB is a color space. Uh, and the example code says that I should initialize an image. And I'm gonna make it the same size as my grid. I'm duplicating this. Um, it's not particularly elegant, so I'm duplicating the data. 
and at least I am initially. And then see if you can see the difference. So actually I'll just um, keep this one secret for now. Change this update to uh, let's see a pixel uh, or even color and let's just say value we'll map from values to colors at some other time and then i at the moment i'm just updating grid but i'm going to change this to update pixel so it's image put pixel x y pixel value except we can't do it straight away Instead, I need to create an array of three. And I'm just going to use grayscale values for now. And it's a little bit happy with me. It's saying that I have an array of U32s. I have three of them. But what I really want is some sort of struct, an RGB thing. And to get around that, I use the RGB type that I brought in from before, along with my value. And saying this I really wanted a U8 and now we have a decision point because we need to decide what we're going to do if we get things that are outside of the expected range uh, right now what I'm going to essentially do is clip the value and or just and you see if val is greater than 255 And if val is, oh, we're unsigned integers here, or at least that's what, actually, I'm going to change this so that this is uh, i32. And if uh, value is greater, sorry, is greater than, is less than zero, uh, then I'm going to, uh, set it to zero. In my case, I know that this isn't actually going to be a problem, uh, but I am, and now the value is value as u8. So now we need to, ah, uh, I'm going to change this again. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Uh, I, yeah. the, the rust is extremely picky so what I'm trying to do is tell it I want you to iterate over signed integers so that x and y have the possibility of being negative and that's not actually particularly useful here though because we're not using operations which can generate negative numbers and so maybe this is me being a little bit um, silly what I was eventually not far from now we're actually going to expand this into something that's a little bit more general purpose and we're going to be creating our own functions uh, so and the other thing that I want to do is image has a resize and I just need to hunt for it over in the docs and I'm always a big fan of uh, using the docs pretty fairly heavily so hopefully you won't mind me doing so uh, image ops resize. Oh, it's the dynamic image that has the resize. And I wonder if I can create a dynamic image from Ah, oh, let's get this thing saving Ah, maybe in gray image will be fine just for now, but I'm doing the same thing anyway. Uh, I'm going to bring these other types into the local scope just for now anyway. This is almost in some ways the most boring part of the exercise. Uh, hopefully you don't mind me uh, spending a little bit of time on it.
I am just checking to see if anyone has any comments. Uh, it's really nice to see a bunch of people. Uh, um, oh, sorry, that was an accident. <laughs> um, saying hello. The image. So we now need a dynamic image from the uh, original. And we can do that by uh, kind of with this magic function here. So we are creating a dynamic image from RGB, which is actually uh, this image thing. And I'm just going to rename image to image. <laughs> and then oh, actually, I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, eventually I will. So I'm just going to what is known as shadow the original variable name. What this does is a prevent Rust from ever allowing me to touch the original value. Essentially, I say that this image over here that's mutable that I define up on line five is no longer accessible to me as a programmer. That's actually really important because I don't want to try to do things that are illegal. Um, sometimes we use the same. And so the new fight is, uh, I'm just going to say 64 uh, times, we're just going to scale up by four. Um, or I could just say 256. Uh, then Rust also requires, or the, the crate requires a filter, which is a, a different method uh, of, or at least it needs an algorithm for being able to uh, decide how to map from one side to, to, an, to another. And to do that, I am going to kind of use what is known as a filter type, and that's from the image crate. And I need a, it's in the image ops module, a filter type, and I'm going to use nearest. Essentially, it's the simplest algorithm. It's, uh, and now, I can save image, I think. And the path that I'm going to use is temp. And we're going to call this uh, hello PNG. Oh, good. In fact, I might not even worry about. I'm just going to unwrap that. Uh, so the unwrap process will crash the program if there was a problem. And I'm just going to store it locally. And so now, if I run this, I require a compilation step. Of course, we're Rust. <laughs> uh, while we're going through this, I've just received a question. What do you think of the MakePad UI? Shout out for Rust NL which is happening in a couple of weeks time in the Netherlands. Uh, I think that Rick presented in 2023, the creator of Rust of, of MakePad. And I believe he may be there in a couple of weeks time. Uh, so Rust NL is a cool comp. I actually don't know enough about MakePad to give you a decent answer. Okay, so we've now got our thing. Here's our grid PNG. And unfortunately, we have this horrible black sludge. So <laughs> that's not quite right. I, um, uh, okay. So what have I done wrong? Every value has most nine. Ah, okay. Mod with 256. Yeah, okay, good call. Really good call. So what the problem was, or at least 
because I am mapping directly from the value and I'm not doing any sort of interpolation or remapping to convert between whether or not this should be a white pixel or a black pixel, the modulus operator is making the maximum value nine. And that's a problem because in fact, now this one is, a, it's impossible to be great. Uh, sorry. Uh, and that is a big problem because now they, the, <laughs> the brightest color that can exist is one of the darkest, <laughs> you know, it's just, it's just a, so we, we don't have, we shouldn't have the gray sludge anymore. Uh, cargo run so grid is updated now we're starting to get something that's a little bit more interesting so that's kind of the very tip although notice that our image looks much different than the original so the original one was look uh, looked a little bit more I'm just trying to think of like this and so what is happening in the original that I'm not doing well first of all um, okay so what's I'll go through to the actual tweet, which is kind of cool. Um, but explain if ah oh, they're treating it as a boolean, and if it is a boolean, then create a rectangle. So that's the big difference. It is a bitmap. We're not. Thanks very much, by the way. So just had someone sort of waving goodbye. It's really nice um, that you've, <laughs> thanks very much for your comments and contributions. That's really cool. Um, I, um, this has been awesome. Uh, okay, so it's not that we, so we're not, um, so the big difference between my code and the original code is that there needs to be a decision about whether, so what we're actually doing is like, <clears throat> this val becomes a decision mark, a point about whether or not to add a pixel rather than, so we need to make a call about what counts and maybe what counts is that if val is greater than zero, The input, and this is RGB, this is no longer val, it's 255. Uh, that should be enough. So essentially we're saying that if oh. <laughs> I like that the, the simple thing that I did is have no resemblance at all to, to what, uh, what is happening here. Oh, because this is, now I need to go back to modu Modulus 9. Aha! That's starting to look a lot cooler. Yes. <laughs> but you're like, Tim, it doesn't, it still doesn't look a lot like what you said it should look like. It's like, ah, oh, wait, because over here, I'm actually only doing a quarter of the, um, a quarter of the work. I just wanted to kind of give us a flavor. And now I need to do this horrible, man, man, slightly manual manipulation of Um, what do I need to do? In fact, I don't need to cast it as UA anymore. And we don't need the mutable value. It keeps complaining to me about this. And we no longer actually need grid. So we can delete that. Now 64, and I'll just find and replace. Uh, you can replace this to 256. We can replace this to whatever we want. Um, Now I'm getting, I should get closer. 
Ooh, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> now I don't actually need to max. I don't need to increase the size by four. Uh, this resize thing, I don't really need. Uh, although I'm straightly, it's the same size as... Um, oh, I think I know what... Oh, that's why. Ah, look at that. It's the same. Woohoo! <laughs> just had another kind of question from the comments which is actix versus axum quick answer whatever one you like best <laughs> i have moved a little bit from actix sorry axum to actix i uh i really like the actix community uh so that's kind of where i'm landing recently however i think that the axum community has some it's kind of growing in steam but so is poem which is another and there's like the rust community has not yet converged on one way to build backends um and i think that there is still space for experimentation okay let's go and play with a couple of these other functions that uh were in the original so I, now that we have a couple of people watching I uh, want to go over, I just want to republish a couple of the links that I had right at the start uh, because I think that they're important to um, just to kind of give everyone some context. So I, so the original, uh, the original message that kind of started everything uh, is in this uh, big thread that's been unrolled, uh, which gener and, and I'm sorry, so that's over here, and I, that's kind of why where I started, and this is the very first thing that we've created, and you can see that it very quickly it gets very complicated, and let's next create some Sapinski triangles. By the way, just to kind of um, like reveal the cards under my sleeves, we are going to be creating a generator which can generate, like auto generate any of these patterns itself, which is kind of awesome. Except it's not quite as good as people at finding it, which is, I think, quite interesting. My colors, by the way, are inverted. And so uh these so i'm actually using a different test or in fact but uh so that's the that's the original thread which inspired this meta filter post the meta filter post was found by a gentleman called chris neuter a writer and who built a bot called the bit art bot which i found on my mastodon and now we're going to re-implement that. And so you can see that Chris's code is way more complicated and actually generates really interesting patterns. So let's have a look if we can regenerate some of these crazy ones over here. Now, one stupid thing, or I say stupid, <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean to be stupid. Uh, the bit, so Rust, Rust, the Rust syntax for performing the bitwise not is different than uh, other languages. And so we just need to do a little bit of mucking around here. And there's a slight problem in that I am using unsigned integers, but... I want to just, um, I need to update this. So let uh, x equals, um, I'm going to say I, uh, x as i64, and then y. As i64. Now, I need to cast them back, of course, because Rust is awesome. And except I actually know that we we 
we we know that it the conversion back will work because uh, the only reason I'm using assigned integers uh, is because I need the negatives in the expression. So let's try and rerun this one just to confirm that we're actually generating the right thing. By the way, would you like the code? <laughs> Because I can actually push the code that I've got right now to GitHub and you can play with it yourself. Um, oh, we're dividing by zero. Ah, yeah, okay. So the original code uh, has a couple of... So this is one of the issues that we're going to get is that as we go through our space, eventually we're going to trigger some mathematical problems like dividing by zero. Huh. Or create a remainder with a zero. And there's actually some tricks that have been added. So we can't we can't we can't reproduce this one yet, but maybe we can do it later. Uh, this one looks a little bit more fun, maybe not. Okay, possibly. So you can kind of see where we're going to. You can see that Chris's bit art bot is sometimes really gets it, like it creates things that are really interesting, uh, but sometimes doesn't. And some things, did, you know, this one here I think is a kind of a cool pattern. Um, and I think it's just fascinating that this can actually be created via a really simplistic, yeah, just mathematical functions. Like there's nothing, there's no magic here at all. Okay, so we have got a big challenge ahead of us. There are a couple of hundred people watching this and we are going to do it together. So kind of strap yourselves in. <laughs> I say that, but actually <laughs> I, I just had a couple of people drop off, which, you know, so that maybe I shouldn't be so excited. <laughs> uh, okay. I'm thinking about what to call my, uh, what we need is, and I'll give you a hint actually, uh, because I'll open up some, uh, I'll open up the cheat sheet and the cheat sheet is the code that I wrote in preparation for the stream because it kind of shows you a little bit. Oh, why is that not working? Uh, hand folder to workspace. I tried this before. It was really unhappy. Oh, I you know, cancel. Okay, I've got it over here. Oh, no, no, sorry. My mistake. Whew. Just need to pause. <laughs> sorry. Ugh. Okay. Now we're looking at the original code, or at least the code that I used in preparation. What we have is, and I called it a calculator. We can call it anything we want. Um, I've got a, so this is like your generative art thing. And it is a tree of expressions. And it is generating a random expression. And the code is pretty complicated. However, we're going to get through it. I promise you that. So kind of take a breath and uh, and we're going to go through the whole thing. I'm just going to see where I am. If I cargo run this, I get a problem because I'm actually in the wrong place. Uh, I renamed this, so I will need to just very quickly um do that by the way are there any questions um you so so again we received our divide by zero we can just kind of ignore that uh get another one we got i added the absolute so that's not a particularly interesting pattern uh, let's try cargo run uh, dash q for quiet uh, just X, and now we're getting something a little bit more sophisticated. I need to change the arguments because 
that doesn't look like it's generating the depth that I want. But you can almost see that it's generating some random expression. And I'm just looking here. The depth is 2 to 8. And I'm just going to set this to 20 and see if that... Uh, 20 to 80. So this should actually be a much lighter expression. We get another divide by 0. Perfect. And a y, x. That's just not fair. <laughs> okay, I need to stop tinkering. Uh, you will be able to find out how to play with this a little bit more, I'm sure. Uh, you can see that I kind of am getting a little bit closer to uh, something more sophisticated. But now uh, we need to uh, actually get some code working. So um, new window I think will be best. And uh, open folder. Oh, this is the one that I want. Okay, so struct. The first thing that we need to do is create some structure. Uh, and we're going to use the term calculator, or maybe we should use something more fun. Uh, so here's our procedural uh, our grid. And at the moment, we don't know what to add into that. I'm going to also have a expression and the expression is going to be <laughs> by the way yeah so i'm i just had another comment about um like whether or not this is an eu friendly time yeah it's an eu friendly time but for me <laughs> it's like after 10 and it's 10 30 in the eve, 10 30 at night so hopefully you won't see my energy levels fading too much um Uh, I want an enum for an experience. Oh, gosh, 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 gosh. And at the moment, I want to have a uh, the ability to have, let's say, a number or a uh, binary operation and a binary expression. And, the, and this will take... Uh, some operator or some operation and two operands so this will be a left hand side and a right hand side and to do that i'm going to use the box which puts uh it's uh the expression that is the operand in uh, allocate space from the heap and returns a pointer that enables expression to be of fixed size because any expression only needs to be as wide in memory as two pointers plus an ex like an operation so what's an operation um we'll call this a binary operation uh for two operands and just shorten that to binary op and a binary op is another enum and it has let's say addition subtraction those aren't particularly interesting from the point of view of our code what we really care about are some fun ones like uh, and so this is uh, bitwise and and i'm going to also say or and XOR. Okay, so the these three operations are not the math are not mathematical. They relate to the individual bits inside of our per, inside of the integers that we're caring about. And takes the bits from both sides and whenever there is a one puts a one in the result so that's fine or uh, actually no no other way around that's the or <laughs> that or in english is ambiguous and requires that 
a one must occur in both parts of the uh, of when a one occurs in both operands in the same place, retain it, or is the opposite. So if there is an a one anywhere, put the uh, ones in the in the result. X or is similar but different. It's called the exclusive or, and that's why English is ambiguous. It means or in the sense of not either or, but must be different. So if you have a, uh, <clears throat> if you have a zero and a one, it just it can't be the same. Essentially, is what it means. Now. Uh, so, so our binary, and so there, and we need the internal layout to be uniform. And so, actually, our grid is also going to contain an expression. Uh, for some plow, oh, this is enough, right? For right now. So we're kind of going off the path of our. We're kind of going off the path of generating images for a moment. And we're sort of creating a baby compiler. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> and we're going to create. We're going to be creating a little compiler that knows how to do things with mathematical expressions that are sort of weird, and or at least it can generate from x some some x and y position. It can create a. Uh, what can it do? From an x and a y position, it will um, be able to put, like send all of that data through the. Ah, uh, oh, that wasn't a very good way to explain it. Let's see what I mean with some code. So our expressions have an evaluate. Let's just call it eval. Uh, that takes a reference to self and some x and a y. We don't really need to worry about x and y yet, and returns an integer. You could parameterize this by any type that you want. Uh, it's not particularly relevant. Um, now, I match on self. This is where it gets a little bit tr tricky. And if I am an express a number. Let's say I'm going to use the number A. Then I return A. If, or let's say I dereference A, I want to return the actual number, not a reference to an integer. Or if I'm an expression binary and I have an operation here, and then I say A and B, or left and right, or otherwise shorten to left hand side. Uh, and uh, you'll also see uh, RHS for right-hand side. Um, we're going to use the, the variable names left and right. Left, right, binary, da -da 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 -da. and then over here we create a new thing. We match on that. Match on operator. And if we are addition, then, oh, sorry, binary op. Uh, add guess what we do well we take left we evaluate our oh, one of the things we need to do is uh we're gonna what is known as eagerly evaluate it eagerly <laughs> eagerly uh eval that the left side and then the right hand side We're not performing any optimization at all. So if you are a compiler hacker and you know about compilers and you're looking for subtree matching or anything like that, I want you to stay quiet for a moment. Uh, so we just return left plus right. And uh, we can continue through the all of the other um, mathematical operations are pretty, uh, in fact, all of these are fairly simple. 
uh, and uses a single and or is or and xor is the carrot y ah uh, okay so x and y need to go into the evaluation context and interestingly we uh we don't have anything to do with x and y yet hmm okay so that's weird i'm just going to almost cheat by providing them as possible values this is only one way to do it i could create um sort of and yeah uh so essentially because i know that this is sort of a special case um because i know that it's a special case i'm just you know we're not creating a general purpose um calculator thing here i can just return the value back this seems almost redundant uh except for the fact that uh, we can make use of this within our display method soon we're going to be able to generate our own expressions and then uh in fact let's just do that now i'll say first i'll just check the comments and i get a hi tim so hello back <laughs> it's really nice to see you please do click subscribe i know that it's a silly thing to say i know everyone that you've listened to online it says like and subscribe hey guys hey 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 uh, the reason why this is important is that the algorithm really likes it <laughs> also it's really good for my dopamine to receive um sort of po sort of positive feedback uh, if you like uh, <laughs> if you like this kind of content please uh, let me know and I'll create more essentially is what this does um, down the bottom if you have just joined us we have some code that creates images and so we were able to create the Sapinski triangle just before we're now generating code that uh, um, <laughs> Tim VW01 has just said, I am subscribed. <laughs> sorry for <laughs> deny. Sorry, that's great. That's excellent. I received a very interesting, I, you know, I, I lurk on, on Reddit quite often and people suggest other, you know, and because my, my YouTube channel is quite small, I am reluctant to put myself up there. And it's interesting to observe how, uh, how the mechanics of kind of like the popularity contest that exists online uh, is kind of propagates through um, what I'm trying to say is that it's always nice to have more <laughs> the numbers are, are, are good anyway well uh, got distracted need to stop that let's go to one oh so at the moment we have no ability to do division uh, we only can we can add and subtract values that's kind of fine um then but we don't have the ability to randomly generate anything uh, so cargo add and i'm going to add the rand crate there are a couple of ways to do this so and so what has just happened is that the cargo has just asked I just updated my cargo.toml file to bring in rand in this case version 0.8.5 and I can now bring in the uh, the rng trait from the rand crate itself which enables me to uh, what do I want to do let's say that i want to create an expression that's random so uh, what i'll just do here is create a function uh where should i put it should i create it as uh, my procedural grid so you, uh, generate expression and then 
let's say that I have, I do not take self as an argument. At this stage, I'm just creating a brand new thing. This will be what is known as a static method. I'm just checking my code. Uh, I'll take something. Uh, I'll take a random number generator. I don't need to necessarily make this as agnostic as, uh, as what I'm doing here. But what I'm asking Rust to provide me is the a right access or mutable access, also known as unique access, to some type that implements RNG. RNG is the random number generator trait from the rand crate. And I want to create a, a grid. Uh, that's a weird place to put it. Uh, I want to generate an expression that's at least some uh, something wide, and I will return a box of an expression. Uh, I don't necessarily need it in here, except for the fact that, you know, what I mean is I don't necessarily, it's a bit clunky having a generate expression inside the grid itself. Uh, however, I want to add this within a new. So this will be used here. <clears throat> we have new and I'll have an X, uh, I32 and a Y. Oh, actually, I don't even need that now. And I return self. What I want to do here is create a, uh, a random number generator, which is, which is called RNG is the variable name. And then, uh, rand thread rng so we're just using a thread local variable and i want to have some depth so depth let's say we'll just associate that with say five for now and i want to generate my expression so here's rng uh, and i'll need a mutable depth. yeah so again strictly speaking i don't actually need this Kind of level of complexity the only reason i want to do this is because uh, instead of hard coding i want to actually randomize the depth that i would like as well and so i can generate a range uh, and let's just say that i want to go from zero uh, sorry five through to eight uh, and in fact i can make it smaller as well and I can use the uh, my random number generator in multiple places this way. And so this is an expression and procedural grid expression. So this explains, so what I'm doing here is creating an instance of the procedural grid type uh, from with a new that is different every single time I generate it. And I just want this generate expression thing to live in the same place as my new method i don't even need the a separate method really i you'll just see here that i'm about to do some stuff which is just a bit yuck <laughs> sorry um, so if uh so i've got to do so what is to do to do is a macro that satisfies the type system and says if you reach this part of the code, then crash. I mean, it's a sad story for the program itself. It dies. However, it will satisfy the type system and see the type system believes that it is being given a box expression. But if I just leave this empty, I'm going to get a compiler error here saying I've got mismatched types. I'm not returning the unit. I said I'm returning. I'm not returning the right thing. This just kind of gives me a little bit of breathing space and means that Rust will focus on the compile errors that I care about right now because I'm about to do some stuff which is just a bit odd. Um, okay, so if depth is zero, then we really need a number. And so uh, I'm going to, why random number generate? I'm going to generate a range. And for that, I am going to say zero dot dot three. And if it's zero, 
you know, I'm going to say expression X. So I'm going to ask for an instance of this. I'm going to say I want this here. Um, the more that I think about this, the less that I'm happy, the, the less happy I am with it being here. <laughs> Sorry. I'm going to move it down to and this no longer it's just going to be generate the expression all of the arguments are the same i feel like that is slightly neater because i'm thinking now and zero one And then two, I want some number. And I need an integer. And then a random number, gen range. And let's say that my range that I can do is from negative uh, 64 through to 64 positive. Uh, everything is quite unhappy with me right now. I'm not using the right, I need, I'm not using the right uh, operator. I'm using e assignment instead of equality, so I've fixed that. And now I'm returning the wrong things everywhere. Ah, I need to match. So, and now this will say, that I don't have the right thing. And I want to do something else to just verify. Ah, so Rust is very angry with me right now because of the, I'm not, re, oh, why is it? Oh, because each side of the if statement is returning something else. Um, uh, I, so essentially what I'm doing is avoiding the possibility of returning a a binary operator on depth zero if that makes sense i hope it does and i'm going to do something else which is a little bit odd essentially to say that for anything else so it's much more likely to generate binary and now i need some sort of decision about like which operator uh i need an operator here and i need a an, an operand on the left and an operator on the right so we're not there yet um, but that's why rust is complaining so in the for the moment i'm going to mark this one as to do as well Now Rust is still angry. Please consider adding a semicolon. Hmm, okay. But I don't actually want to do that. Uh, I would quite like to... I, I'll add a semicolon here. Uh, so it's saying, why don't you, you know, okay. And now I've got an expression. This is an expression on the stack. I need an expression on the heap. So what I'm going to do is box it. Box takes the, uh, the box new, takes the argument, places our allocate space for it on the heap, takes ownership of the value. And when the expression is no longer needed, we'll deallocate. And this will propagate all the way through uh, recursively. At the moment, we don't, we're not actually making use of the recursion. However, this will come. <laughs> uh, I'm about, again, it's a bit ugly. I'm about to do something that pains me slightly. One thing I dislike about Rust is that we get into 
when I sort of a nested we get into some oh, I'm just going to add a comment here I'm adding some weight to I'm going to actually add that uh Okay, so I why? Oh, the okay syntax error. Okay, good, good, good. I can fix that. Right. I wonder if anyone's still watching. <laughs> I'm still watching. Uh, yes, you are. Well done. Oh, and I've just had a I've had a question probably several minutes ago, uh, nearly ten minutes ago. Did you ever finish the game with the star map? I have not. Uh, I should do that. <laughs> I always I always do things like this and promise that there'll be like a version one, like a version like a follow on. Um, and then I sort of doubt myself and say, oh, no one ever wants to watch the follow on. Uh, so I will endeavor to actually finish some projects. This one we are going to get done. <laughs> uh, if you have just started watching, welcome. You are very, very welcome to uh, participate however you would like. I'm just going to give you a small recap about where we, uh, what we are doing. So uh, we, we have some code already that generates images. And in fact, we've created a Sapinski triangle um, we've asked the computer to do so and we are going to uh, go through the process of generating the, the uh, so we did that and I'll generate some more just for fun uh, I'm going to come going to comment out a lot of the code that we don't need currently just to show the people who have just joined us what we did at the start uh, here's a complicated expression uh, let's start with something that's more simple and so uh, for pixels in uh, x and y uh, I take uh, some mathematical expression and then if I get greater than zero I say that it's a white pixel and if not it's a black pixel because I set, and set them initially to be black I can run this. Uh, it takes a little bit of compiling because I've asked for some random number generation to be include, included. But now mm, that looks suspicious. <laughs> Suspiciously like the one we just looked for. Uh, uh, I wonder. I wonder if I'm in the right. Okay, mm, maybe that is the code for the Sapinski triangle. Ah, uh, this one here is a more complicated expression that we found online, and it crashes. So we're not, we're not interested in this one. The this thing here, x bitwise or y modulo uh, nine, does not crash. So let's try again. Aha! We have something interesting. That is not the, not the triangle that we saw before. And different versions of these quite simple expressions produce very... And we'll use another prime number. Uh, and let's... Let's try both together. Anyway, so what we are asking Rust to do is build these expressions itself and then render images. Okay. 
there's lots of playing to do. Um, I'm so here's our procedural grid thing. This is kind of the basis of the, uh, the image itself. Uh, the thing that we are creating is expressions, which these mathematical expressions <clears throat> in uh, randomly. In randomly. Oof, sorry about the terrible English. So uh, we now need to create, uh, we're looking for uh, binary operators. So this was the and or the XOR that we just made use of in the last two images that we produced. And binary op is match on random number generator gen range. The weighting we're going to use is relatively, we're just going to use the same weighting as before. Oh, sorry, we're going to have equal weight for all of our variants. At the moment, we only have how many binary operators do we have? Not many. We have one, two, three, four, five. So this so if it's zero, no, I'll just copy this across. Okay, I have a left side and it's a binary operator. So I have a left side and a right side. The left comes from somewhere else. Let me just double check. Uh, oh, I'm suddenly blank. Uh, let me just double check my cheat sheet. The Ah, of course, we generate another random expression. So that is, so we are currently in a gener expression generate with the same random number generator and then depth we, de we decrement. So we reduce by one. And now we have the right hand side. And so we have a left and a right expression. And here, left plus right. And subtract. And is, oh, this is way, 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 Ah, no, sorry, I'm fine. The, ah, oh, no, 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 I'm, I'm, sorry. I've just made a huge error. We're not evaluating the expressions yet. And this should actually be five. The Rust type system is going to complain because we don't have. Uh, I'll say this one is unreachable uh, because we're matching on an integer, and the type system doesn't think of integers as being restricted to four, even though gen range uh, zero to five will only provide. A maximum of four so i can use this unreachable macro to tell rust that i am uh, not going to ever have more than four 
And if it does, because I made a mistake in my code, then I will um, I'll just if it does because I've made a mistake in my code, that's actually a good thing because I will find out that I what will I find out? I'll find out that I had an error because I, my program will crash. Okay, so now I am down in the evaluation side. The operations are already created. Um, or the evaluation, except for the fact that I, oh, I have a typo. <laughs> and there's one more compile error up the top here. I have something else that's red, but I can't see it. So I'm going to run the compiler and it will tell me use of undeclared clay module rng ah okay so what i'm doing here that's weird line 11 um That was difficult to debug. I used the wrong syntax. So I've got RNG here, and then I use the uh, two colon, <laughs> these two colon, uh, <laughs> two colon operator. Sorry, it's now nearly 11 p.m., so my brain is going. <laughs> and what I needed was the dot. He said, oh, okay, so I'm still. And now I have another problem with exhaustive ranges, and so I'll say this one is also unreachable. Now I have a better compiler error. The warning is telling me that I've never used it, which is good because it means that the compilation has essentially succeeded and then done another pass to tell me that it's not actually used. So down here in my main function, I should be able to create a grid uh procedural grid new oh now i don't like the name of procedural grid uh and suddenly the compile warning goes away what i have here but the the eval doesn't so i'm just going to create an impulse around procedural grid and we'll call this um calculate or calc itself uh, x i32 y i32 returns an i32 and i'll say self zero eval x y i now like no longer like this name uh but i can't be able to think of something else um the what we can do here is update val instead of being these hard-coded values I can eval. Ah, oh, I just called it calculate, didn't I? Oh, this needs to be mute to bool and then calculate x, y, and then I expected an i32, but I found an i64. Okay, cool. Um, This should work, but the result will probably be ugly.
Will I post the code? Yes, in fact, sorry, I should put uh, put this up now. Uh, GitHub Tim Clicks to slash tutorials. I have the code that I'm writing in a branch that I will uh, actually, I actually, I actually pushed it straight to main, <laughs> but it's locally. I can push it live to GitHub now if you would like. Um, uh, but otherwise it will be there on my GitHub. And okay, let's see if this works. I don't think it will, or at least it never, it never does first time, right? Take the mutability away, except this time it worked. And let's go look at our grid. It looks awful. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so it's big and white because of our um our definition of value so i now need to make a decision about what what it means for my code so these are in my in my domain so we're mapping from one domain for the x and y coordinates to some space i now need to make a decision about whether or not this is a pixel or not and i'm going to try something slightly odd which is i think which is to say that if i satisfy some threshold uh in fact i'm going to say if you're higher than the average value then you're white otherwise you're black um i can do something possibly more interesting which is scaling by yeah let's do that um one of the issues that i have at the moment is i don't really have any interesting operators um so to do this i'm just going to we, what we're going to do is find the maximum and minimum range of the evaluation that we're doing and then force that into 256 grayscale, grayscale values. Um, so here's my i32 max and min. And then uh, I'll just change this to if val, if the value is less than max, all right less than minimum then minimum is now value and additionally if value is greater than max uh, max equals value we need to do something slightly annoying i need to go back to my original we can't create the pixel buffer yet because we need to map the values in our grid to uh, u8 values so i need to kind of adjust that and we so we're going to need a second pass i'm going to go back to the original now i'm really going to need a new variable name um uh, uh i'll keep that one i'm going to call the space buffer and so the, the buffer is going to be value. Why are you unhappy? Ugh. And then I need to go. <clears throat> Need to go through the grid and um, this is actually not grid this is my buffer for every row and then every uh every item in every row i need to update the value inside the buffer to be the new one now we need to go through <laughs> now we need to go through it again <laughs> and update the pixels and i'm going to do this in the worst possible way because i'm tired <laughs> sorry 
we're not going to calculate this. We're not going to. Uh, we're going to get. value from buffer and then we're going to put pixels oh, actually we're just going to color it right right now is that we So this is now a grayscale value. We're not going to use um, <sighs> we're not using the um, the bitmap. We're going to actually use grayscale and value, value, value. This should generate some image that is not just a white box uh <laughs> i go run but we oh now we divide by zero okay so sometimes our expressions are going to be illegal that's not fun uh sometimes they're going to work and this time i just ran it again and it worked um we don't know what it's going to produce we didn't produce much interesting but we got a gradient so well done us very good um as you can see we this is not a particularly interesting pattern what would be nice to do would actually possibly be to print out the expressions that we generate and this will be the last thing that i do before i need to go to bed <laughs> Um, although it is lovely spending time together, like here on stream. <laughs> I gotta say, um, you know, I'd get to hang out with some old friends and uh, some new friends as well. The so this again is not a particularly satisfying expression. We haven't implemented some. Ah, uh, maybe I'll try and just add one or two more interesting things just to try to generate some more interesting values uh, in particular i want to implement uh, oh no i'm going to do i'm going to reduce the weighting of oh, let's just see if i can figure this out mentally uh two three two five five through two oh that's actually six through to eight is that right <laughs> no ten through to 14 and this is going to be to 15. so now we have a much heavier weighting on some of the i said what i'm going to call the more interesting operation like addition and subtraction is not so good like it's not really that fun is it uh we could there are other ones we could include uh one is mod um mod is actually kind of important because it will create um mod is going to create patterns because we will we'll create cycles um uh, <clears throat> and the other thing we could add is division but i just want to see if I can generate something that's a little bit more interesting than this gradient. Blech. And this is 15, and I'm going to say that goes up to 20. Oh, 19. Just, just for fun. Like, 
you get to tinker with all of this yourself. Uh, it's the 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 nice thing about being in a um, uh, your, it's your generator. It's your uh, except we have no way of evaluating uh, yet. So Rust is angry at me. It won't actually compile uh, the code and. Just going to do one more. Okay. So building, building, building. Panic. Because we're probably generating uh division by zero. And I've lost my thing. So now we have at least some sort of stripe thing going on with some gradients. Like, okay, it's not pretty <laughs> the same way that uh yeah it's it like we have some work to do let's say <clears throat> um let's try to so now we wanted to actually print this thing out <clears throat> and apologies that my voice is going the printer the way to print in rust is with the display trait uh, display is slightly subtly different from debug. The debug trait is for you as a developer, but your users of your command line, literally the users, uh, they want display. And to implement display, sorry. We have to do a little bit of work. Uh, I get this, I have to implement a format method or FMT, which takes some random thing formatter that looks really horrible. The kind of the most awful syntax um, that beginners are exposed to. I take a mutable reference to some thing formatter that takes a reference, the, the syntax here, the tick and the underscore mean, a, indicates that it has a reference to something. And so it has an, <clears throat> an indication of a lifetime, but essentially you can ignore that um, for now. <laughs> In fact, you can almost just ignore it completely. The type, the type system needs it. Um, we're going to go through all of the types that we have implemented uh, or created and get bigger and get larger and larger. So the thing that I need to do now is think. Let's start with num. Oh, expression. In fact, I own it. No, let's start with binary. I need to go from the, the smallest to the largest. So binary operator. So I need to implement display for that. And I'm just going to copy and paste some code that I've already got. that uh, is going to be in the example code base. I think it also includes um, division and multiplication that we're not going to use in our code. Or um, I might add division later. You know, let's, let's do that. We can also add powers of things. And the other one that... Uh, and now we can actually go to expression we can go one level up and that implementation is something else uh, that looks very similar so we go so here's our implementation uh, format display for expression if we are x or y we just print out x or y if we're a number then we print out the number the literal number itself if we're a binary operator, then we add <clears throat> brackets or parentheses around it. On the left hand side, 
we print out left, then operator, then right. The right macro that I'm showing you now is almost identical to print line, except that it takes this formatter as an argument. Now, I don't have unary operators in my code in this one, um, but that's just a hint for later for you to go check the code in the repository that you can also, we can we can do other things, like we can add knots and, and so forth. And I might get to that later. So we've got a multiplication to add back in and also unary operators too. Um, I did promise myself that I would go to bed though, which uh, <laughs> is proving a little bit hard. Now I can go back to this thing and say that if I have this procedural grid uh, and I want to have display, I can just write the take formatter and I'm just going to have uh, self.0. I'm just going to defer directly to the expression for now. If you want to have some more parameters in here or specialize this behavior or make this thing which uh, we, which is our procedural generator, <clears throat> uh, you can do so there. But at the moment, uh, we're just wrapping a specific expression. Okay. Oh, one more thing. We need to actually use my display method that I talked about um, over here at the end. I'm creating my grid and I'm also printing the, uh, the thing too. So now we should have an indication of what is actually being generated. For some reason, my generator is rubbish and it is not actually producing very many complex patterns. So this uh, gradient is being produced because every, uh, the output pixel is the same value as the Y. That's what that looks like. Uh, we have a division by zero, which is awesome. And now we have this sort of a similar but different thing. This will be a different gradient, but it will start at black. Oh, sorry, it will start. It will start slightly dark. Uh, I think. Um, again, not particularly interesting. Another backtrace. So one of the ah, okay, finally we get a kind of cool pattern, which is yay. <laughs> y minus sixty bitwise or x and so that is kind of interesting uh and you know it's not quite as cool as the original ones that we we, we were playing with a, um, a while ago uh right at the start that people would have selected however it still kind of shows you that the computer can begin to generate complex patterns we could potentially have some sort of criteria on that if we could essentially have our the thing to do now is to say well if your pattern isn't actually very interesting we could count the number of leaves for example in our expression so we're creating a tree of um, of nodes and if we only have fewer than four nodes maybe we should or if we don't have anything if we don't have an or operation or if we don't have any binary operations at all then uh, then discard it uh, but we don't really have that capability yet um, but what we do have is some code for you so allow me to get add this one and this one so the underscore, and I'm just, uh, I'm just about to wrap up. So if you have any follow-on questions, please ask them. 
<laughs> please ask them to me now. And uh, <laughs> and I also have received some spam, which is quite nice. Um, allow me to figure out. Uh, I do actually know how to block spammers. And so the... Uh, but I don't think I need to bother. Um, let me... <laughs> I love this. <laughs> Glorious. And so, yeah, okay, cool. Um, I don't need extra followers. I can just get followers by being good and being useful and interesting. <clears throat> this is the spam, by the way, just to show everyone. Um, the. Yeah, that's fun. It's guaranteed. So, guaranteed followers. Price is lower than any competitor, la 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 la. Everything is in my hands. Wonderful. You know what is, well, yeah, okay. So, uh, there's, two fol there's two folders. Uh, one is README, which is a, uh, sorry. <laughs> one is the underscore, <laughs> which is the original. And, uh, the bitgrid without an underscore is the code we just created. And so I'll just, um, there's a cheat sheet code. I am waiting for any questions to come through. So if you're, if you uh, want to add them, please do. Uh, I hope this has been a really fun and entertaining uh, and also creative uh, journey through us. And there is actually a term for the type of procedural, gener procedural generation that we're producing right now. And I can't remember what it's called. The, um, <laughs> I also, yeah, I need to go to bed. Uh... Okay, so it's now on GitHub. The GitHub is uh, GitHub Tim uh, GitHub slash Tim Clicks slash tutorials. You are very welcome to go and find the code there now. And I will see you online. I'm going to say goodbye. And I very much hope that you have had a nice day. And uh, you have a nice day here. Take care. Goodbye.